If you want to know how fast you're moving through the universe, you don't need a speedometer, you need the sky. See, the Big Bang left behind a glowing afterimage, the cosmic microwave background, and it's not perfectly uniform. One side of the sky is ever so slightly hotter, the other side colder. And that pattern is exactly what you'd expect if you're drifting through a bath of radiation. You run into the photons in front of you, and you flee from the ones behind you. So the universe comes with a built-in at-rest reference. There's a special motion where the photons look the same in all directions. But that's strange, especially if you consider Einstein's relativity. In special relativity, motion is supposed to be relative. There's not supposed to be anything that tells you you're not actually moving. So why does the universe seem to come with one anyway? It's simply because the early universe wasn't just empty space. It was a hot, dense quantum soup. And hot already sneaks in a temporal flow rate. It's true, a quantum vacuum doesn't have a preferred rest frame, but a thermal state, like the early universe, just isn't like that. Instead, a thermal state has a natural notion of no wind, the frame where there's no net momentum flow. If you move relative to it, you must see a Doppler gradient. That's not breaking relativity, it's just what a thermal state is. But that gives rise to a deeper question. Why did the universe end up in a definite no wind state at all, instead of being in some perfect quantum superposition of different bulk drifts? It turns out, answering this question likely requires solving, well, everything. And that's because it involves quantum cosmology. One possible answer is decoherence and branching. Different large-scale drifts leave different gigantic records, different dipoles, different correlations between photons and matter, different gravitational potentials. Those records get copied into absurd numbers of degrees of freedom fast. Once that happens, the alternatives stop interfering. You don't get superposition of drift A and superposition of drift B anymore. You get effectively classical branches each with its own cosmic flow, and we're inside one branch of an infinite multiverse. Another option is that the cosmic wave function undergoes real wave function collapse. Some people argue that you need an objective collapse process in cosmology to turn symmetric quantum states into definite classical outcomes, not just for the CMB dipole, but for any particular realization of structure in the sky. But in both cases, the CMB defines a no-headwind viewpoint because the universe is in a specific macroscopic state, not because space-time passed a law saying this reference frame is special. But what's puzzling is that we don't know which story, branching, collapse, or something else, is the correct fundamental account of how the universe went from quantum and symmetric to one particular classical sky with one particular drift, one particular pattern of galaxies, and one particular set of asymmetries. So the CMB isn't announcing an absolute rest. It's showing you the oldest weather vane in existence, the fossil imprint of a quantum to classical transition that the universe made one way or another.